standard calculations of break even and the break even point of a business are not actually all that useful because they look at what it takes to get the profit and loss in a business to zero. However, there are other costs, other amounts of cash that leave a business, meaning that a typical break even point, if you hit that number, you can actually still run out of cash in your business. Eek! In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the cash break even point. This is really the only break even point that actually even matters in your business, but it's one that so many people, including accountants by the way, don't bother to calculate. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell so you know next time I upload a video about all things business money. I am Annette Ferguson, Chartered Accountant and Certified Profit First Professional, and I run Annette & Co, a UK-based accounting firm. The break-even point in economics and accounting is where the total revenue minus the total costs equals zero. So where your profit and loss account would show a zero in that bottom line. However, there are other costs in a business that are never shown in the profit and loss account. Things like loan repayments, for example. And if you don't include those costs in a break-even calculation, which typically is not done, then what can happen is the business can hit that target break-even number, yet still run out of cash. What is significantly better to calculate for a business is something that we call the cash break even. Cash break even will layer in those other costs that never appear in the profit and loss account, but actually you need money for in your business to pay out. Think of your VAT bill, for example. So let me explain how to actually truly calculate a cash break even point in your business. Really the only break even point that actually matters as a business owner. So when you calculate your cash break even, you'll need to have a note of your business's costs. Now, most people will calculate break even over a month so that they know on a monthly basis how much cash the business has to generate in order to have a cash break even. So first of all, list out all your monthly costs in your business, all the monthly spending that happens. Make sure that in this number, you include any elements of VAT when you're VAT registered. So listing out things like your software subscriptions, your accountants fees, all the costs that you have in your business, the rent that you have to pay, all those things, list out all those monthly costs that you have. And then I want you to find out all the annual costs that you have in your business. List out all those annual costs and the amounts that you pay annually for those. Divide that number by 12 so that you get an equivalent monthly cost and add that to the monthly tally. So add the annualized amount divided by 12 to the monthly amount. So you've got uh, an amount in there for your annual costs each month as well. Then you need to think about any debt payments the business has. Make sure you include those in your monthly costs. Each monthly debt payment, whether that's a bounce back loan, whether that is a, a standard other loan for the business, higher purchase payments or lease payments that the business might have, include those in your monthly payments as well. Make sure you include any team costs that you have, whether that's employees or contractors. And if it is employees, make sure you include your PAYE payments and your pension payments for those employees as well. Once you've got those costs written down, make sure you include for any bank charges that you typically incur for your business too. You may also incur 
things like Stripe charges or PayPal charges. Now, at this point, you don't want to put in what those typically are each month. You actually want to be using a formula because usually that will be a percentage of revenue. So just keep that line blank for just now, but remember that you're going to put in a formula so that you can calculate the two or 3% that you typically get charged from your payment processor as a percentage of revenue. You'll have to include that. Now, as I'm discussing this, you can do this on a piece of paper, you can do this in a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. We would typically do it in a spreadsheet because then you can put in some formulas and you don't need to do lots of adding up. Now, something else you need to make sure you're including in this list of monthly costs of your business is your own take home. How much money you are taking out the business on a monthly basis. This is something that a traditional break even calculation doesn't usually look at if you're taking out dividends or repayments of director's loan. But I want you to put in the amount that you transfer from your business to yourself on a monthly basis in this tally because that is incredibly important in understanding how much revenue your business has to generate and you making sure that you get a take home from it. You also need to consider VAT when you are VAT registered. Again, this will typically be a formula. What you want to do here is you want to look at your previous VAT returns. And when you look at your previous VAT returns, I want you to calculate how, what percentage you typically pay of revenue. So if you look at your previous returns and you look at the sales figure that makes that up, what percentage of sales is typically going to be going out in VAT? Now, if you don't know how to work this out or you can't calculate it, use 16%. Use 16% of revenue as what is going out in VAT. That will be the most that you'll typically pay because that is the highest end of the VAT flat rate scheme. If none of those words make sense to you, don't worry, just go for 16% of revenue when you do this calculation. So now you've got two elements that are use, going to be using the revenue number, which you haven't plugged in yet, into your numbers for their calculation. One is going to be any Stripe, PayPal fees, those um, payment processors, and the other is that VAT number. Okay, so you're going to plug that in too. And you're also going to need to think about corporation tax if you are a limited company or personal tax if you are a sole trader. This is going to have to be a calculation as well, but we're going to have to get a little bit funky to calculate this and have some um, subtotals going on. So just put a pin in that thought for now. So what you've got here is you've got all your costs listed out, every single piece of spending that's going to be going out your business on a monthly basis, including payments to team, HMRC payments, payments for overheads, including your own money out. Now, if you are a product-based business or have a cost of sales, you're also going to have to do a percentage calculation for this as well. So that is again going to be a percentage based off the revenue and you'll need to look at your historic cost of sales to calculate what that percentage is going to be. So look at historically what percentage of revenue have you spent on cost of sales and you're going to have to put a formula in for that as well. So once you've now you've got your kind of spreadsheet column set up or if you're doing this on paper you've kind of got this written out. So now you need to basically start plugging in a number for revenue um, so that when you take your revenue minus your cost of sales minus all your other costs what do you get to at the bottom? You've got a, you're gonna have to do a sum at the bottom for that. The sum at the bottom, I want you to have that as almost a, a, a sub sum, as it were, because what you're going to then do is have a line under that and you're going to have tax. You're gonna put 19, 20% tax and you're going to reference that sub sum and then you're gonna have another line at the bottom which has the sub minus the tax, okay? And that will give you your bottom line. That is the number that needs to be zero. So in the top, you're gonna to start plugging in numbers into this revenue line. Is it 10,000 a month? Is it 50,000 a month? Is it 100,000 a month? What needs to go into that top line number so that the bottom line comes out 
to zero. And this is just a plugging in numbers guessing game. The formulas will start to work out for those um, boxes that you have formulas in and you'll be able to work out, okay, how much cash inclusive of VAT do I need to bring in my business every single month in order to break even, in order for the profit to be zero, for me to be paid, for my taxes to be paid, for my team to be paid, for all my debt to be paid and my costs to be paid in my business. And that is by far the best way to calculate the break even point in your business and not rely on the profit and loss account being nil. And if you are getting value from this video, do make sure that you come and hit that like button. So what happens if you've calculated this number and that sales number is much higher than you can reasonably generate on a monthly basis? Well, that is where you need to start going back to your costs and examine if you have any, what we call money leaks in your business. A money leak is when you have spending that happens is which is not either 100% necessary to keep the proverbial lights on in your business, nor is it delivering you a positive return. Because if it's not doing either of those, then the question is, what is the purpose? And often it means it's a money leak in your business. Now I have a video that goes into an exercise how to identify and eradicate money leaks in your business. And I will include that in the description to this video. So after you've watched this one, you can go ahead and watch that one and do the money leaks exercise if you are in this position. Once you've found and eradicated money leaks in your business, then it's time to review and redo this cash break even calculation so that you update it for the latest information. Ultimately, this is a puzzle. It's about getting all the pieces to work together so that your revenue is achievable, your costs are in alignment and you have good money home from your business as well. Now, if you're struggling with the accounting for your business, I would love to help. Do reach out to me at yt at annetteandco.co.uk. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.